It's quite a controversial and difficult question in Christianity today. Continuationists and cessationists have attempted to make biblical arguments to support their stance on this issue. In this case, we will observe what two well-known preachers, John Piper and John MacArthur, have to say about this issue. Then we will go to God's Word to see how we ought to think about whether or not the spiritual gifts have ceased. John Piper is the founder of Desiring God Ministries and served as pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota for over 30 years. Piper holds the continuationist position, that is, he believes that the spiritual gifts described in the New Testament have continued and are available to Christians today. We're a church that believes in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to do whatever he pleases, including all the gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, to just pick out one list. There's no theology at Bethlehem that says God can't, won't, shouldn't give anybody a gift of faith, a gift of miracles, a gift of healing, a gift of tongues, a gift of wisdom, a gift of knowledge. So John Piper believes that the gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10 continue to this day. John MacArthur hosts Grace to You and has been pastor of Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California for over 50 years. MacArthur holds the cessationist position, that the spiritual gifts ceased with the death of the apostles and the completion of the canon of scripture. The New Testament miraculous gifts ceased. They ceased. That has been the normative historical view of the church through the church's life, going all the way back to the New Testament and on into the modern era. So John MacArthur affirms the cessationist position that the miraculous gifts have ceased. Just to look further into one example, let's consider the gift of prophecy and first see what John Piper has to say about that gift. Prophecy in the New Testament, at least the way it's treated in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, 14, doesn't appear to have the same scripture quality, inerrant inspiration and authority that when in Isaiah, thus saith the Lord, you don't, you don't go up to Isaiah and say, I'm gonna test what you've said now and hold fast to what is good and throw the rest away. But you do that with New Testament prophecy. You test it and if it proves good, that is confirming, conforming to authoritative teaching from the apostles, then, then you embrace it. And so prophecy in the, in the New Testament seems to be down a notch from the authority of Old Testament prophets. This is a common continuationist argument to support the continuing of the gift of prophecy. However, to this, a cessationist would argue that continuationists change the biblical definition of prophecy, as well as the biblical definitions of healing, speaking in tongues, and so on, as John MacArthur explains here. They believe in tongues that aren't languages. Whereas clearly in the New Testament, they were languages. They believe in miracles that aren't necessarily like the miracles Jesus and the apostles did, and they say that. They believe in revelation, divine revelation, but not infallible revelation. So they have miracles that aren't the same as the New Testament miracles, tongues that aren't the same as the New Testament tongues, prophecies that aren't the same as the New Testament prophecies, that's not continuation. That's cessation and inventing something else. The debate continues as a cessationist would say that 2 Corinthians 12.12 12 is key evidence that the miraculous gifts ceased with the death of the apostles to which a continuationist would argue that the apostles were not the only ones in the New Testament performing these miraculous gifts. Further, a continuationist would use 1 Corinthians 13.10 to show that the gifts won't pass away until the perfect comes, which they would say is referring to Jesus. To that, a cessationist would argue that the perfect in question here is actually referring to the completion of the New Testament, which would prove that the gifts have ceased, as it says two verses earlier. The debate goes on and on, so who is right? Truth is, there are faithful Christians on both sides of this debate. 
Christians who truly love the Lord and revere His holy word as authoritative and sufficient find themselves opposing each other in this debate. John Piper and John MacArthur are perfect examples of that, as they are both true, faithful ministers of God's word, and yet they disagree on this issue. So what are we to do with that? Perhaps Paul says it best in 1 Corinthians 1.10 when he says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Here and elsewhere, believers are encouraged to be unified and not let secondary debatable matters cause division between us. Although God's word does divide true from false believers, and we should never unite with those who teach heresy. But disagreement over secondary issues alone like this one can be handled humbly and graciously among disagreeing brothers and sisters in Christ. So where do you stand on this issue? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to look deeper into this issue, I've provided resources in the description. In the meantime, let us remember these words from Paul in Ephesians. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. But you're experiencing what I've discovered in my whole life, what I've experienced my whole life, the profound, almost... Um, almost um, unbearable joys of discovering truth in Scripture. Yep. And it just lights a fire in your heart. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. We, we express that a little differently. I keep my arms down. You put your arms up. <laughs> you, know, you know, I was thinking about, about miracles and it just strikes me as I, as I look at these guys down here, what a miracle it is that they can keep their arms down. I mean, I just, I don't have that kind of control. So that's, that's obviously you believe in the supernatural here because they don't lift their hands. That's yes. amazing.